So what's going on everyone? Today I'm here working on this old rooftop unit, this beast. I don't even know if it's old. Just everything up here on this friggin' roof has this black color. I'm not sure why. Everything here has turned black. So let's open this old beast up and see why there's no AC. Could be anything, but let's find out. what I see. I'm sorry if I get any of you guys dizzy now. Yeah. I'm putting you guys on. I spotted something. Yeah, as I put you guys on, I noticed that somebody's done the igniter, but of course every igniter that does the flame sense, so that's common on these. So these wires have all been, somebody's gone through low voltage wiring already. Looks like not in a while though, they're all dirty and filthy, but it's been some kind of electrical things here going on. Oh, bunch of screws. So a heat exchanger was replaced. It's usually when you get all these nice new screws. So looks like a heat exchanger may have been done here. Let's get on up to the top part and see what's happening what's taking place up here that I can't reach without a ladder at least I brought one up all right so let's we got this circuit breaker on this trip so that's where we're gonna have to start find out why it tripped Okay, what do we got here? We got power in 600 volts 206 207 208 all right, so I have power in Power to my transformer Two oh six all right it's gonna feed power. Contactors have power. Yep. Just wanna make sure I got power to my contactors. Okay. So I'm tripping the breaker. Let's find out why the circuit breaker is tripping. Something on my low voltage. Of course it's nothing. Let's shut the power down so that I can work on this. Let's... I reset at least. That power. 22. It's a little weak, but I have power. And it reset. So, got power here. I could jump it out and turn it on. See what happens. See if a contactor may be doing it or when exactly I trip. Because it reset. Nothing started though yet. So, Y1, I need W2, Y2. Let's see. Y1 and Y2 look jumpered. 
Yep, their jumper, it's, uh, let's go to G. Yeah, let's just turn G on first, let's see. Bing. Fan starts, good. Nothing to do with the fan. Both my compressors come on, let's see. Probably end up in free cool. Is there economizer on this beast? Yep. Yeah, and I feel a draft. So it entered free cool. Now my transformer is set weak. I'm set for 240. 230 and I got 208. I have like 207 coming into it, so that's why 22. So this thing started right up while I was on the phone. Of course, I can't leave it running. What do I have? A water bottle cap or something floating around there? This wide open, my head pressure is going to go up, so I'm not using my condenser. So it's an intermittent short, it looks like. Great. Couldn't be like every single start, it's got a short. It's not even like I disconnected anything. Let's put this here at least. To block some of the air. Put that up there. Boom! Oh, I hit the condenser fan. <laughs> ah, I just bent it a little. Right in. I was like, boom! It spit it back. I'm wondering if there's voltage drops here on occasion. Which then my 24 becomes too weak. Twenty right now, look at that. Oh, let me do an amp draw. What sucks is my meter. I should I've only had the other fluke, but the other fluke is useless. Compressor two started up. Both compressors are on right now. So I'm in completely mechanical cooling. So, yeah, I'm wondering. It's all this problems, like there's a voltage issue, low voltage to the unit where maybe it was a higher voltage coming in. And now, because of that, I'm having some problems. Let's see, it's over. thing to stay there is because I could have actually I don't know why I just didn't do that hook it on there but we had a successful start that should shut down the AC unless it's falling inside Might be. Oh, I could just reset the unit and start it back up. I take my glasses off. Showing up as zero. So this one's got 
drive. I'm tracing a short, but okay, everything went off. <sighs> Nothing on the bottom end seems like it's at the fault, unless there's something rubbing on occasion. What else could be rubbing? Like wires rub. I've actually seen wires rub shorts through them. You gotta watch for that because the wires will actually rub through each other on occasion or rub through the copper. It's a nice little short. Got a refrigerant fix also usually on those. It's coming through this. I have no idea what these things look like, but everything's floppy in here. Floppy, I tell you. These are the fire alarm wires. They're all floppy. Flopping around. Flop, 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 flop. Floppy, floppy, floppy. They're all floppy. And the schematics over here. And the schematics. fan running whatever yeah here we go it's not that we don't have much of a load on here today anyway but down here nothing white wire cut but okay 24 VAC it's all going up okay into the smoke all right Let's reset it. See what happens. Should be turning on. Should be my glasses, but my bag. Whew. I'm wondering, but just because there's so much junk everywhere junk 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 nothing underneath this so this way I don't create a short while I'm working See to kick on. Any second now, come on, God, turn on. I could bypass, but I think the thermostat's calling anyway. This guy feels like he's seen better days. I mean, this guy's used all the time all summer long, so maybe time to retire. 
Okay, now I'm calling. Ding it in, ding. I mean, all the contactors pulled. I stepped down. Or is it a step up in this case? Not 115. It's making 115 for my heat section. Hmm. But what I'm wondering is if it's straining on start the low voltage. Go max. Record the start. Right now, point three. Point three. Five. I had one of one of my co-workers was working with me. He still works with me from time to time. But when he was first starting off, I asked him to lower it to the 208. And he ended up unfortunately moving the common over, blew a fuse, it was a the breaker was destroyed. And it was a special breaker. It had like three different things on one breaker, almost. We had to really hunt down that breaker so we could swap it out. That's two successful starts. Something in here is acting up. Point five with just one contact they're pulled. Now is this the one feeding my contactors? I'm on 31D. Let's see which one feeds my contactors on the schematic. Put on the gas pipe and spin. You don't want to put on the freaking roof and spin. Okay, we'll put it right here while we look. Oh, that's filthy. Okay. So, CC1, contactor 1, outdoor motor, outdoor motor 2. So, CC1, CC2. Outdoor motor, CC compressor, contactor, CC1, CC2. CC1, CC2, so you got this on it, this on it. Yeah, yeah CC1, CC2, CC1, CC2. Same switch, just different wires. CC1, CC2, okay. What's on the here? That's heat. This is the heat section right there. So. Compressor one, compressor two. Okay. And then the outdoor fan motors are all off of the same contactor. Gotta love train schematics. Second one started which is the low voltage wire for CC1, CC2. This is all line voltage at this point that we're looking at. I hope my low voltage schematic. Great, great. Oh, where is it, where is it? Oh, where is it, where is it? Nah, <laughs> well now, hey now. Well actually, but this goes to here. 
I don't have the transformer here because the transformer for my low voltage starts at the bottom and continues at the top. So now CC1, CC2 should be CC1, CC2, red, 86. So we have 36 BL into here. 31 31A C D comes off of here, 31 A C D, so that's gonna be all those wires pretty much. Thirty one D, thirty one C, thirty one A, all three of these are feeding power to each one before it turns itself on and off. Thirty sixes are all on the other side. Got 31s, CTB, right? TB5, TB5, got a love it, TB5. LTV6 30 would be in the notes down here. Now, uh, whatever, I'm gonna skip that. That's probably W2 or something. Emergency stop. So, pretty much, D comes over, comes through on K9, CC1, RTRM, that's the main control board. So far, we're not doing anything. Here's the main control board. C is a 31 D they go everywhere so thirty one A is landing somewhere but the economizer. He's going that way. Yeah, he's going over there. 24. It's, oh yeah, it said 24 was going to, so. That's two now. Two successful starts. I'm wondering on occasion if the power voltage drops here that's causing issues problem is I hate the friggin lead what about the economizer when the economizer goes to open let's do it again
I'm not seeing anything. Okay, even if I restarted it, it still has to time out before it comes back on. Hardest part is not to move my head a lot, like I'm used to doing. I have ADHD, so it's hard for me to keep my head still, but I know I got the camera on my head because it's not easy to have a chest cam when you're working like this. What is this? Not attached. Is it needed for anything? 56 and what's the other one 50a I don't know why it's not attached looks like it was supposed to it's so close to it we'll see 56 and 50a 56 And 50A coming off this board, 59, it's a two-wire plug-in on the board. It's this board here, so two-wire plug-in, I see 59. 51, 52 over here. See from your guys' end, it's probably easier to see, but 56 outdoor air temperature. Okay. Why is it disabled? I don't know. CPR1. CPR1 is the compressor disabled. Sending a signal to disable, but. I'm wondering why my outdoor sensor might be disconnected. Did it just fall off? They're just falling off or something. Ah, uh, it's got, nothing's gonna hold it on. So if you move the wire a little bit, it falls right out. Okay. That's more for the economizer. where you check your flame sense for heat. Hmm. Nothing right now. Boom. Come on a bad wire for amps anyway. Thirty one D. Six. It's got to be, it's got to be a fluke. But I'm actually believing it's the low voltage issue because my secondary power at the moment is what let's see what 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 so we're pulling in our coils at 20 volts they could do it but it is a power surge on it so Two with it running, I mean. Of 
worst part of a job like this is it's a waiting game. You're trying to find what could be acting up, what's doing it. I mean, you gotta be shorted somewhere over here because you got your 24 volts in to this. This is a test. You could just, if you don't, if you don't want to wait, you could just put like a quarter between it. And it gives you the directions on how to test it right here on this door. You could cycle through, let it run each set, each cycle, like each section for 30 seconds, or you can quickly maneuver through it. Okay, so. Success, success, success. I bet you it's got something to do with the 20 volts. I have going through the circuit, that's too low. Let's kill it and see. Before I touch, okay. Let's just see what happens with the here, remember. You have to move the wire that's here, not this, or you create a friggin' short. Even look, it moves a little. Well, let's see what happens. Boom. Two, three amps. Okay, my control circuit now. It's 205 up top. 24 so now I got 23 24 volts so I'm looking a lot better now than 20 volts which could have been over amping and causing the problem we're down at 2 amps 31 D Sixty four of the contact is this one. Thirty six A comes here. Twenty four boom. Fifty A, that's that two wire. And then D. Thirty one D right to the bottom. Where is the wire number? No, fifty two. Okay, whatever. Make sure it's plugged in, don't let it fall out. But now we got a high, better voltage signal to the unit. Control volts are 24. 23, 24 is better than 20. Let's see what happens when all the contactors pull, but two amps on here, lower amps. I got a 75 VA, should be able to handle it. turned off and we're off to the races go two amps a lot less amps on that circuit Between R and C down here, let's go smaller scale, so it looks fancier. That's all it does, it just looks fancier with the smaller scale. Same voltage, but you got decimals and you feel like it's bigger. Because you got 25 on this scale, look at that, 25. Impressive, right? It's got to be, because how do you got 25 there? And 23 here. 25. That looks so impressive. Then I go to the 600. 22. Do I not touch right? 22. 22. 
my meter wacky 24 maybe it's not as sensitive but 24 that looks a lot better than 20 24 My contactor. Ah, I'm slipping, I'm slipping. 24. Alright. Contactor, contactor. Zero, but we're not pulled. Dun, dun, dun. I gotta fix this wire. It looks like it's about to fall off, unless that's how it's supposed to be, but about 24 to the back. I think the reason that it probably tripped is because I didn't have a high enough voltage source through for my controls. I had 20 VAC. Even though every time it's worked, what, what if the power drops a little bit here? Then you're going to go down a little bit in your voltage. But I'm not seeing anything. It's not shorting, it's not tripping. Yeah, I gotta tighten up some wires. I'm not gonna touch and tighten, but it looks like that's just how the contactor is, a little longer on these terminals. Because both, yeah, I see the brass to the bottom. Brass to the bottom, so those are on good. All right, this is what it is. But now, why was I tripping? It has to be because of voltage. line so I usually I set it higher most of what I'm testing is 202 let me test with my fluke 0.6 didn't drop a lot but let's see I trust my flute a lot more than I trust this field piece. Field piece is still nice meter, but this thing I trust my life on. Boom, second compressor. That should be even a higher amp draw with another contactor bolt. Nope, still 0.6. You would think that other coil energizing would have done a little something. Especially because A is what feeds the board, and the board feeds here to hit the first contactor on top of me. Where's the black wire up? And then it's got to hit the yellow wire, 83, 81, 84. So, let's see, 84, 81 is this wire. 81, 61, 61, 84A, 83A, so wire in the back, Eighty A, 90A, so it's probably going from here through the economizer, coming back, but it's not, it's alright, it's alright, 88A, but what's the voltage? That's what we want to know. You know, I got nothing on that. Five here. It's big fat wire. This juicy red one. Nothing. The juicy red one doesn't want to carry anything. Smoke good. So D seems to be my highest one. 0.6. Let's go to voltage and let's see. We'll go right here. 202. 205. 
24. Obviously, I don't have a short to ground or something would pop. All these wires look pretty good. Point six. This fat guy, does he have a friggin' number? Because he's probably an add on. he going let's follow him and go for a ride wanna go for a ride -na 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 he's going to the back probably feeding power for the economizer surprised we don't got a number as we're chasing him oh we do 31 e so we have a number to chase him out on so, 31E is going to... Okay, TC01, high limit cutout. So that's heat. Here it is. Nope, that can't be the wire. I am not picking up. These are the smoke alarms. This is a compressor power line. Compressor. That high limit right here. In the back. Going with the high limit for the heat. I can kick the heat on, see what happens. Because I hate saying that I can't find the problem. Even though I did address the 24 volts. Nothing is happening. I'd love to get something to happen, but nothing wants to happen. Sorry if you guys are getting a little dizzy today. Let me know. I want to know from those who enjoy my videos what you guys think of when I do wear a camera on my head like this. Because I'm letting you guys see what I'm seeing. The problem is, is that I enjoy turning my head and looking around, and seeing what's around me. But then I hear, oh my goodness, I get so dizzy from you looking around that I don't, I can't watch you because I'm so dizzy. I feel nauseous now. Sorry if you get nauseous. I'm just trying to give you guys. The view I have. This is what I'm seeing. I'm allowing you guys to come along and see what I see and what I deal with at work. Well, amp drawer doesn't do anything to help. Boom. 24. I'm just thinking that what was happening was I didn't have enough power drawing some of my contactors at times and it would trip the friggin' circuit breaker. Because if that little switch, say I jammed it in and it couldn't open, it probably smoked that transformer already. So, I wish I could say, yeah, this is shorted, this is bad, look, bad, 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 but I can't. Can't do it. All I could do is turn it off, tighten a little wires here and there in case something's a little loose. Disable the AC, kick the heat on, but I doubt it's a heating issue. They haven't turned their heat on yet. Ugh. Now I have a feeling that this hacker is gonna be friggin' out. I wish I could say. Definitely, like I said, that this is bad. But 
This is the life of an HVAC tech. How long can I screw around with this thing? Yes, I do get paid hourly by my customers. For labor, not flat rate. But I also want to make sure that my jobs are done correct. It's not about wasting time. It's about making sure I don't walk away. Because if I got to come back, I come back for free. So I don't want the free comeback. Anytime I, I miss something and it's a callback, it's free. You can't bill for that. So customer has me there for free. So therefore, I'm going to make sure, even if I spend a little bit more time on my first trip, that it's the only trip. That's why I don't understand when companies push guys, go faster, go faster, faster, more jobs, more jobs. It's like, but hold on. The guy does too many jobs and say he's running around like a chicken without a head. Well, then what are you gonna do? How is he gonna be a good worker? How is he not gonna screw things up and have callbacks and then make the company look bad to the customers? I think I wanna get a zip tie and fix this stuff up. If I knew this was a rat nest, I would have done that already. Okay, I'm gonna get a zip tie and just do that. Makes it look a lot better, even that. <laughs> Uh, even a little more. I wonder if I have a tie in my bag. Anything. Is there a flopping around? Oops, is that a zip tie? I love it. It's one of the ones that are supposed to strap something to the case. But hey. It'll at least hold it a little better than it being flopping. So, let me get a little low voltage screwdriver, just kick on the heat. Just to verify that works, since heat's going to be needed soon. It's already September, so time goes so fast. A horror movie. Oh, the call for cool's over. All right. So let's go on. We got W1, W2. We do. It's all tied together. Look at that. So as long as I energize W, the other one comes on. But I don't want Y starting while I'm doing this. Because I know it'll activate because it'll get hot inside. It'll kick on. Yeah, y'all. Okay, that's gone, so I can't activate now. Bump, 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 bump. Everything's off. Now let me go to W. I'm just gonna turn W2 on. It's a negative pressure gas system, so. All it does is ramp the speed up of the inducer. Here we go. Good condensation coming out too. I hear the heat starting. I wonder how much this thing's gonna go boom, boom, and what kind of rust is gonna shoot out. Always shoots rust. Not always, but a lot of times. It's friggin' voyagers. Voyage, voyage, voyage away. I haven't heard it kick on yet, so. Igniter should be glowing. There we go. Ooh, a nice smooth start. Hasn't ran in months though, that's why it didn't shoot any water or anything out of it. 
This thing's allowed to shoot water out. That's why those rust stains are there. Not sure why. I'm not sure. Is, are these RTUs supposed to be pitched back a little so the water goes back into the giant friggin' barrel? Don't know. I don't install these. I just service them, so. But the heat turns right on. Blower hasn't started. There goes the water coming down. They love to condense and drip. Maybe that acidic water could help me clean that friggin' fungus off of the friggin' diagram. Blower hasn't kicked on yet. There's the blower. So it works in heat. No problems in heat. Turn the heat off. It's friggin' hot. Probably like 75 out here. Don't want them friggin' sweating in the warehouse. Gas section's off. Fan's still on. We'll wait for the fan to stop. Then I'll put the W back in and the jumper. Oh. Should be a nice, interesting day today, September. Always an interesting point. I could be doing heat maintenances. I could be doing ACPMs. I mean, a lot of schools getting MERV 13 filters so they could reopen. So that meant a lot of these units had one in, had, were set up for one inch filters. You gotta swap them for two inch filters. It's fun on some units, especially when you can't fit in them. They put them into like this little closet area and you really can't get in to work on anything. I mean, yeah, you could get to the front of the unit, but the filter side, they just left enough space that you could pull the filters in and out. If you ever try to squeeze your body, not this, but one of the train air handlers on like a 7 or 10 ton air handler, and you got like a little triangle like this underneath, your filters are going to go across, but you got to get your body all the way in. That could be like 15, 10 to 15 feet deep that you're trying to get your body in as you're trying to pull that track out. Huh. <sighs> What a nice day. The humidity's high. Okay, so the fan is still on. Off. All right. So, let's get this guy back connected together. I put my screwdriver, the screwgun, right here. Bang! No longer here. Good thing for the door, breaking its fall. Would have damaged that roof. I'd be in trouble. I'd have to pay for a friggin' roof. Don't want that. Nobody wants to pay for things. Jobs, you're supposed to make money, not pay money, but you know what? It's part of the business. If you mess something up, don't be a scumbag. Don't cheat your customer. Treat them good. Because you want to keep that customer happy. You want to keep that customer wanting you to work on stuff. Not feeling like every time this guy comes, he's trying to sell me something because those are the worst. Not for anything. I worked for a company once and the guy was expecting you to sell stuff on all your maintenances. It's like, but wait, I didn't have to sell anything. What do you mean? You could always make something up and tell them they need something. Gotta make revenue. Gotta make more money. It's like, but hold on. I'm doing AC maintenance or heat maintenance for this person. My objective is to make sure that their system is operating to the fullest. No problems. Not rip people off. Make them pay for things they do not friggin' need. Okay. Everything's tight. Because a loose wire on the low voltage or somewhere could also wreak havoc. Tight. 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 I know it's as far as it goes. I just want to... Part of me is like, you better check it. You better, better, better check it. are on good yeah 
Okay, everything's attached. So, I think everything is good here. I'm done. Back on. I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary that could short out anywhere, so. Yes, it was tripped. Probably a power surge dropped the voltage low enough. Didn't have enough power. Pull in a friggin' contactor. And poof. Raised the VA too high and tripped it. I'm going to say that's it, folks. I'm going somewhere else. But I'm not hustling. I'm not hustling at all. I got today. Let's see. I have this. And after this, I have a leak search. One of my favorite houses. I already fixed two coils in that house, two evap coils. I found leaks and I fixed them up. Now I gotta do a leak search on two separate, two other machines in that house. So, I'm hoping I don't have four leaky evap coils in that house this year. That's not good. And then after that one, I have to, something with a transfer switch. I gotta find out. I think, I don't know, somebody else went there and there's something wrong with the transfer switch, lugs or something like that. I gotta go back and just see, I don't know. I gotta stop in my shop because I don't have that on me, but I'm just going back to take care of it. This thing just any second. I just want to see it start before I say, hey, this is a victory. Because the worst thing in the world is you think you got a victory, you put all your tools away, you close the friggin' unit up, and then boom it goes back off on a fault anybody says they've never experienced it is full of it we've all experienced it and it is the worst thing in the world you think you're done you go to the customer to collect your money and boom it stops working yeah every time you worked on it it worked worked fine no problems any second now unless it's not calling but i just ran the heat for a little while it was calling when i got here oh yeah here we go here we go That time delay seems like it's forever when you're waiting for it. I wish there was a way to bypass it. I don't have anything here that I could bypass and skip it. It's not working. It doesn't want to go. Is it connected? Yeah. Somebody disconnect my test? Boom. Okay, fan. Compressor. Compressor two. Pressure two. About the time the test started working for me. Ah, uh, heat, whatever, we'll go heat. Oh no, compressor two. Boom, off. Heat. I could have sworn I heard the compressor two come on earlier, but there goes the heat. Some probably water on this one shoot out of here okay so now the igniter should start to glow on 
Oh, there comes little rusty flakes. Knew it would happen sooner or later. And I think there's a little one here. It could be a dead bee or something, who knows. Okay, let's turn this back off. Off. That'll stop. And turn the bright off, so. Back on, fan. Compressor. Come on, compressor. Come on, dude. I'm, like, I'm touching it. Boom, compressor one. Compressor, so now the second one. There we go. Two compressors. Keep starting, stopping every time. I'm gonna say it was a voltage issue causing that to trip. Everything's working on, off, on, off, over and over again. Maybe the voltage dropped low enough it had a hard time powering up the contactors and just shut down. Well, till next time, I'm out of here. I got more work.